Hello everyone in our anatomy on blackboard series today we are going to discuss regarding the arterial supply of abdomen we have three ventral branches of abdominal aorta which is contributing mainly for the arterial supply of abdomen let's see the first one is celiac trunk which is situated between t12 and l1 vertebra and it arises from the anterior side of the abdominal aorta and this celiac trunk is also called as artery of forget because it mainly supplies the organs which derive from the foregut mainly up to the second part of duodenum where the common bile duct gets open so if you have any doubt regarding the arterial supply of celiac trunk just check out the video and then comes the superior mesenteric artery which arises at the l1 vertebra level and it is also called as artery of midgut as it mainly supplies the organs derived from the midgut then at last inferior mesenteric artery which arises from the l3 vertebra level and it is also called as artery of hindgut after that the abdominal aorta bifurcates at the level of l4 which is very important in mcq point of view and it bifurcates as common iliac artery all these vertebral levels are more and more important in mcq point of view so this is all regarding the location of the arteries which is supplying majorly the abdomen and in previous video we had discussed regarding the celiac trunk so today we are going to deal with the artery of midgut which is none other than superior mesenteric artery so now let's see the parts supplied by our superior mesenteric artery in previous video we had seen that up to the level of uh, opening of the common bile duct it is completely supplied by the celiac trunk and now from here from the second part of duodenum below the opening of the common bile duct it is supplied by superior mesenteric artery as followed by jejunum here then followed by ileum and from there it also supplies appendix cecum and ascending colon this is the ascending colon and it also supplies the transverse colon but it supplies only the two third of the transverse colon up to this and in previous video we had seen that the upper part of the pancreas is supplied by celiac trunk so here the lower part of the pancreas is also supplied by the superior mesenteric artery so this is all regarding the blood supply of superior mesenteric artery so i'm just repeating it again from the second part of duodenum and it goes it also supplies the jejunum then it also supplies the ileum here and it also supplies the appendix and cecum and it as it also supplies the ascending colon and it also supplies the two third of the transverse colon up to this margin and uh, in in the supply and in the blood supply of pancreas the upper part is supplied by the celiac trunk and this lower part is completely supplied by superior mesenteric artery now regarding the origin course and termination of superior mesenteric artery so you just have some rough imagination regarding the origin and course and in while discussing regarding the branches we will see in detail so we all know that this superior mesenteric artery originates from the l1 vertebra which is almost 1 cm below the celiac trunk celiac trunk will be here and superior mesenteric artery is here and from there this superior mesenteric artery runs behind the body of pancreas so you just imagine that the pancreas is here and the superior mesenteric artery run behind the body of pancreas like this like this and it enters the third part of duodenum as we know that second part would be here and third part would be crossing like this so here this third part of duodenum is there and here this superior mesenteric artery crosses the third part of duodenum and it enters the root of mesentery mesentery is a peritoneal wall and it finally terminates in the right iliac fossa you just imagine that the right iliac fossa is here and this superior mesenteric artery after crossing the duodenum it enters the right iliac fossa and in the right iliac fossa it gets anastomosed with the iliocolic artery i will explain you later regarding the iliocolic artery so now regarding the origin course and termination of superior mesenteric artery it originates from the l1 vertebra level in the front of abdominal aorta which is 1 cm below the celiac trunk celiac trunk is the artery of foregut and from there the superior mesenteric artery runs behind the body of pancreas and it reaches the third part of duodenum and in third part of duodenum it enters the mesentery and it reaches the right iliac fossa at last and there it gets anastomosed with the branches of iliocolic artery and this is roughly regarding the origin course and termination of superior mesenteric artery 
let us discuss regarding the branches of superior mesenteric artery in superior mesenteric artery we have right side branches and left side branches right side branches first one is inferior pancreatico duodenal artery then middle colic artery then right colic artery then at last iliocolic artery this is the artery where this superior mesenteric artery finally gets anastomosed in the right iliac fossa which, which we had seen previously and this left side gives branches around 12 to 15 jejunal and ileal branches so remembering the branches of the major arteries are also important in mcq point of view so you just remember it as MRI2. Okay. So M is middle colic artery, R is right colic artery, and I both of the I belongs to inferior pancreatico duodenal artery and iliocolic artery. So these things are more and more important. So here now we are going to discuss regarding the first branch that is inferior pancreatico duodenal artery artery arises from the superior mesenteric artery in the upper border of the third part of duodenum you just imagine that the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery is arising here in the upper border of third part of duodenum and there it divides into two branches one is anterior branch and another one is posterior branch both of these arteries run in the pancreatic duodenal groove and supplies the head of pancreas and duodenum and finally this inferior pancreatico duodenal artery gets anastomosed here it's not exactly here it gets anastomosed with the superior pancreatico duodenal artery so this superior pancreatico duodenal artery arises from the gastro duodenal artery and this gastro duodenal artery arises from common hepatic artery and this common hepatic artery is none other than the direct branch of celiac trunk. So if you have any doubt regarding the celiac trunk, you just check out the previous video. So this is all regarding the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. So this inferior pancreatico duodenal artery arises from the uh, superior mesenteric artery in the upper border of the third part of duodenum here. And it divides into the anterior and posterior branches. And this runs in the pancreatico duodenal groove and it supplies the head of pancreas and duodenum. And finally, it gets anastomosed with the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. And this superior pancreatico duodenal artery arises from the gastro duodenal artery. And this gastro duodenal artery arises from common hepatic artery. And this common hepatic artery is the direct branch of celiac trunk. So if you have any doubt regarding the course termination and regarding the branches of celiac trunk check out the previous video then now let's see regarding the middle colic artery so we all know that superior mesenteric artery at last ends in the right iliac fossa by getting anastomosed with the branch of iliocolic artery so let's see this middle colic artery arises in the right side of the superior mesenteric artery below the body of pancreas so just imagine pancreas here and it arises below the body of pancreas and it divides into the right and left branch so this is the left one and this is right one this left one anastomosis with the left colic artery and this left colic artery arises from the inferior mesenteric artery we will discuss regarding this inferior mesenteric artery in the next video and this right branch anastomosis with the right colic artery which is the branch of superior mesenteric artery which we will be discussing later and these branches form arcades form arcades like this and it supplies the transverse colon mainly supplies the transverse colon through the arcades formed by these branches so this middle colic artery arises from the right side of the superior mesenteric artery below the body of pancreas and it divides in the left and right branch and left gets anastomosed with left colic artery which is a branch of inferior mesenteric artery and right gets anastomosed with the right colic artery which is a branch of superior mesenteric artery and it forms the arcades here and it supplies transverse colon. So now we will be discussing regarding the right colic artery. So this right colic artery arises from the concavity of superior mesenteric artery. You just imagine that it is arising here like this and it divides into ascending branch and descending branch. So ascending branch going above and descending branch going below. So this ascending branch anastomose with the middle colic artery here as we had seen above. Middle colic artery anastomose and then this descending branch gets anastomose with the iliocolic artery which is also the branch of superior mesenteric artery and here 
the branches of the artery supplies the two third of the ascending colon and also the right flexure of colon so already we had seen that the middle colic artery supplies the transverse colon and this uh, right colic artery mainly supplies here this two third of the ascending colon and the right flexure of colon so here about the right colic artery this right colic artery arises from the concavity of the superior mesenteric artery and it gives ascending branch and descending branch ascending branch anastomosed with the middle colic artery and descending branch gets anastomosed with the iliocolic artery and uh, and also it supplies the two third of the ascending colon and also the right flexure of colon So now let us discuss regarding the iliocolic artery. Here this iliocolic artery arises from the right side of the superior mesenteric artery and it here gives one superior branch and one inferior branch. So superior one and inferior one. So this superior branch gets anastomosed with the right colic artery as we had seen before. So it gets an anastomosed with the right colic artery. And this inferior branch we had already seen before that it anastomosed with the superior mesenteric artery at last. And this iliocolic artery give four different branches. One is ascending colic branch to ascending colon. Then anterior and posterior cecal branches. And then appendicular branch. And then ileal branch. So here is the superior mesenteric artery and from superior mesenteric artery, the iliocolic artery arises. And this iliocolic artery gives branches to the cecum as anterior cecal artery and posterior cecal artery. This one is anterior one and this one is posterior cecal artery. And also it enters into the mesentery and supplies the appendix as appendicular artery. So now regarding the iliocolic artery, this iliocolic artery is the last branch and it gives uh, superior and inferior branches. And the superior branch gets anastomosed with the right colic artery and this inferior branch as he had seen before that it anastomosed with the terminal portion of the superior mesenteric artery and here this iliocolic artery gives branches that are ascending colic branch then posterior and anterior cecal branches then appendicular branch and ileal branch so here so here this is the superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric artery gives iliocolic artery and this iliocolic artery gives cecal branches one is anterior cecal and the next one is posterior cecal and also it gives appendicular artery you can see in this image So here, still now we have discussed regarding the right side branches of uh, superior mesenteric artery. Now regarding the left side branch, that is jejunal and ileum branches. So here there will be 12 to 15 branches which will be supplying both the jejunum and ileum. And here these anastomose with each other and forms the arcades like this. Which is none other than vasa recta. So you just imagine that uh, this is the jejunal or ileal wall and here because of the anastomosing between these vessels we can see the arcades like this so this is how the arcades look like so this is called as vasa recta so jejunum and ileal branches which forms the left side uh, branches of the superior mesenteric artery in this and it is 12 to 15 in number and this anastomose which with each other and forms the arcades arterial arcades like this and this is called as vasa recta so now let's have a quick description so this superior mesenteric artery arises from the anterior wall of the abdominal iota at the l1 vertebra level so from here it is arising. So this superior mesenteric artery arising here and it passes like this up to the right iliac fossa and from right iliac fossa it anastomoses with the iliocolic artery, branches of iliocolic artery. So first in case of right side we will be having the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. This inferior pancreatico duodenal artery arises in the arises below the third part of duodenum and it gets anastomosed with the superior pancreatico duodenal artery which is one of the branch of common hepatic artery and then then comes the middle colic artery which arises from below the pancreas and it has two branches. One anastomosis with the left colic artery and one anastomosis with the right colic artery. Then arises the right colic artery and this right colic artery gets, gets two branches. One is 
ascending and another one is descending. Ascending gets anastomosed with the middle colic artery and descending gets anastomosed with the iliocolic artery. And then comes our iliocolic artery. Then in case of iliocolic artery, we have two branches, superior and inferior. Superior gets anastomosed with the right colic artery and this inferior gets anastomosed with the superior placentric artery. And uh, in case of uh, left side, we are having 12 to 15 branches. Those were jejunal and ileal branches which anastomose with each other and forms the vasa recta like this to the jejunal wall. So this is all regarding the superior mesenteric artery and if you have any suggestions or queries regarding the topics to be discussed or any doubts regarding any particular topic, we will continue the discussion and thank you so much. Happy learning with us.